Hey everybody, Bill Owen from MNPC Tech. Today in this video tutorial case mod guide, I show you how to create a custom front grill intake in the NZXT H440. This is a guide that I've had people asking me to do for quite a long time, but I've been super busy. But hey, I eventually get around to it. Now, you can apply this case mod to the top panel of your H440 if you wish. So you can do that instead or both. And you can also apply elements of this guide to an entirely different case like a Fantex or a Fractal Design or even an old beige tower so you can get much better airflow ventilation for your system inside. A one inch gap at the bottom for your hand for removing the bezel, it gets airflow there. Then on the right side only, there's this one inch wide perforated grill and a quarter inch gap at the very top of the bezel. Those are your only areas for drawing in cool air to your system. There's been a lot of people that are running high performance systems or custom liquid builds that are looking for a solution to get more air into their NZXT H440. Remove the front bezel of the NZXT H440 and mask off the front with a low tack masking tape. This is so you can mark your measurements for the large opening you're going to cut and also it protects the surface from any scratches or nicks as you perform the incision and the cut. Next step is we're going to determine the location and size of our front opening for the new grill. Grab a ruler or a measuring square like this one and find one and three eighths and you're going to measure in from both the left and right side of the bezel one and three eighths and from the bottom one and three eighths again then from the very top you're going to go in one and three quarter and make a measurement right there now you're going to join all these marks together and make a large rectangular opening that is 14 inches tall by six inches wide. If needed, you can pause the video right here and take a screenshots of the measurements that I've made. When you're cutting the opening in the H440 front bezel, place it on top of an empty box similar to this. This box will collect debris inside of it. Also, it allows clearance of your jigsaw blade while you're cutting it so you don't ruin the surface of your workbench or your workstation. Here's an overview of the equipment and tools I'll be using to make the cutout in the H440 front bezel. First off, safety first. Wear a pair of safety goggles or safety glasses like these. You're going to be using power tools, especially when you use a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel, you're going to create shrapnel. So let's keep your eyesight intact. Now, this is a Dremel 3000. You can use whatever rotary tool you prefer. You can get a good Black & Decker RTX off Amazon, I believe for around $40 shipped. It's the best rotary tool out there. Now what's crucial though, is that you use a reinforced cutoff wheel to cut metal and heavy plastic. Stay away from the brown cutting discs. They're just gonna disintegrate when you try cutting metal. Now this diameter is one and a half inches and MNPC Tech sells these in packs of five, but you can also get them from Amazon, Dremel Direct, or home improvement hardware stores. That's the crucial thing. Um, next, I'll be using this jigsaw with an 18 TPI bimetal cutting blade to make the long cuts. Before you start cutting the front of the H440 bezel, you will want to remove the sound dampening foam on the back side. If you don't do this, it's just gonna cause frustration later. It's gonna gum up your cutting blades. It's gonna be hard to determine if you've made a through hole yet for the jigsaw. So just kind of have to take your time and slowly peel this foam backing off. Yes, this is definitely the most tedious part of this mod, but it must be done for the better later. Before I can use a jigsaw, I need to use a rotary tool to make an incision cut for the jigsaw blade. As you can see, it's blunt. You can't make an incision cut with a jigsaw. So what I'll do is I'll use the rotary tool to make my incision cuts, and I'll do it in each corner. 
the dual layer material and the H440 bezel, it took a long time just to make these incision cuts. So if you plan to use your rotary tool to cut out the opening, it's gonna take a long time, just an FYI. So what I've done is I've made an incision cut in each corner here and then on the opposite corner right here. Now I can use the jigsaw to make the long cuts and cut out the opening. So if you need to fine tune the edges, if you got a little crooked, you can just take a hand file and do that. And what I'm doing is just applying some tape right around the edge so I don't accidentally scratch or nick the factory paint. For the front grill intake, I'll be using this round hole modders mesh from mnpctech.com. It's available in 12 inch by 12 inch or 12 inch by 24 inch size sheets. It has 33 holes per square inch, plenty of airflow. It is a plain steel, so it's very strong yet pliable. And this also matches the grill design on the H440 from the factory. Now, if you want to do something completely different and custom, maybe you're working on an entirely different case, there's also the honeycomb version of the Modders Mesh from MMPC Tech. This has 79% airflow, much better airflow than the round hole, which is at 60%. But I'm going to go with the round hole so I match the factory grills on the H440. For our cut opening in the H440 bezel, we want a grill size that measures six and three quarter long by 15 inches tall. And I'm just using a Sharpie marker here to make my measurements on the round hole mesh. To cut the mesh, I use a tin snip shear or steel shear. You can get these at hardware stores or home improvement stores or probably Amazon.com. They've got everything, right? Because Modder's Mesh is a bare steel, we want to prep and paint the surface. Otherwise, over time, it's going to oxidize. Now, if you like the silver look, what you can do is apply an enamel clear coat over to preserve the steel so it doesn't oxidize. Otherwise, for our application in the NZXT H440, I want to paint this a gloss black. So, what I'll be using for a primer coat is SCM Self Etching Primer. Make sure you wear a filtered respirator mask when you use this paint. It's highly toxic. It's made for applying to bare steel or plastic surfaces and you can get it at Amazon.com here in the States. And for our color coat finish I'll be using Rust-Oleum Painters Touch Ultra Cover 2X Gloss Black. To prep the surface of the Modders Mesh for the base coat primer I'm using 180 grit sandpaper. I'll go over the surface with this and then I'll use a tack cloth to wipe off any dirt or dust from the surface before I apply the primer coat. I've taken the mesh outside so we've got good ventilation when using our aerosol paint. Starting with the SEM self etching primer first and this is a black primer and this dries fairly quickly give it about a half hour and then I can apply my black gloss color coat. I've applied the self etching primer to both sides of the mesh and it's cured for 30 minutes. Now I'm ready to apply our color coat which is the gloss black by Rust-Oleum. I'll apply two to three coats of this and then let it cure for 24 hours before I handle the mesh.
The next stage is using a two-part epoxy or some type of heavy-duty glue to attach the mesh to the back side of the H440 bezel. Now this is a crucial detail. You'll notice along the edge of the cutout I've reapplied tape. And the reason I've done this is because when you use a glue or epoxy, as it cures, it's going to spread out. What you don't want it to do is spread and go onto the edge or the face of the bezel where you'll see it. Our paint has cured for 24 hours. So we're ready to place it on the back side of the H440 bezel. Make this an opportunity to align the holes with the edges of the cutout so they're as straight as possible when you see them from the front of the case. And before we apply our epoxy, I'm going to weigh down the mesh with a rechargeable battery and then a small form factor power supply. The reason I do this versus taping the mesh in place or using clamps is because the epoxy that, that I use is going to spread out as it cures and if you have tape it's going to go over the tape and it's just going to make a mess. So this is the cleanest way to set up the mesh while you apply the epoxy and let it cure overnight. The best epoxy I found on the market in my 18 years of custom PC building and modding is 3M Scotchwell DP190 and this is the translucent version. There's also a gray version. This is a commercial grade epoxy. You're not going to find it everywhere. You're going to have to go online to get it and it requires a special applicator gun to use the epoxy cartridge. These also come with a spiral tip so as you squeeze the epoxy through the tip it mixes together. However, I don't like to use the tip when I do this particular application because sometimes I get too much epoxy out of the tip and it runs all over. So what I do instead is I'll squeeze out the solution onto something and then I'll get a little mix stick of some sort and I'll actually use rubber gloves and just dab my finger into it and then smear this over the perforations in the mesh on the back side of the bezel. The DP190 epoxy reminds me a lot of maple syrup. It has the same look and consistency. As it cures, it will spread a little bit and expand. 24 hours has lapsed for our DP190 epoxy to cure. But Bill, how strong is it really? Show me. This old Cooler Master 1000 watt power supply weighs 7 pounds. This Antec 750 weighs five pounds. It's strong, trust me. More than enough strength for a front bezel grill. All right, I've got the fans running on the H440. Put the filter back on. Front bezel is complete. Thanks everybody for watching this guide. And again, you can apply these same steps and products and tools to doing your own custom front grill intake on your own PC case. Maybe it's a fractal design, a Fantex, a Cooler Master, or whatever that could use better ventilation for your system, either the front or the top panel. And uh, that's, that's why I do these guides is to just share what I do and inspire you to do your own thing and uh, modify stuff. So thanks everybody for watching. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments. And uh, please like and share the video. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon.